I'm, I must look like a right loon just stood it in the middle of the forest, tanking it down, cold, coming in dark. But I guess this is what you have to do as a photographer. It's been a crazy mad dash this morning. BBC were forecasting solid cloud. My app was forecasting solid cloud. Now check this out. Now we're taking a quick shot. Um, I'd love to take some drone footage, but I, I, it needs to be about the photo. So I'm gonna move on and try to get to some of the compositions that I wanted to take yesterday. Right, so this morning has been a little bit nuts to be honest. Uh, I was, well as you saw yesterday, it was tanking it down and I was walking around underneath the brolly. It was really miserable conditions. Um, and I was checking the forecast last night and it pretty much said the same, just solid cloud. I checked an app which I use as well called Clear Outside. It's an astronomy app, but I find it very useful. And that was saying solid cloud. And I was thinking, right, I've got a seven hour drive today um, and the intention of this morning was just to pop out and take some of the compositions which I discovered before in what's likely to be less than favourable conditions. So I thought, I won't get up too early, but I actually got up at half five. And I looked out the window and the moon, I could see the moon and there was uh, a bit of mist about and a bit of frost. And I thought, what's going on here? So I ch quickly checked the forecast again and it said sunshine. So it just obviously changed its mind last minute. So it was just an absolute mad dash. I almost broke my neck going out the door because all the rain on the decking had iced over. I've almost broken my neck getting here. Just <laughs> It's an impossible terrain to move across quickly. It's just boggy, thick heather, lumpy. Um, and I stopped very briefly down at the, the lock in there and got that reflection shot. Um, and yeah, I could have done with being here half an hour early, but I can't complain because I've got a shot which is far better than I expected to get this morning. Um, and the mountains just look absolutely stunning. They're just by far the best that I've seen them all week. So yes, I want to show you one of the compositions which I discovered a few days ago, and I think it really works quite nicely. So what we've got is these two pine trees in the foreground and I think they just sit perfectly where there's the intersection between the two mountains and the middle mountain um, just sits very nicely in between the two trees and it's just the flow and the balance of the composition which I think works really well you've got the the trees which follow the fall um, of the mountains the shape of the tops of these two foreground pine trees they follow the fall of the mountains um, we've got the the kind of for heathery foreground which kind of comes in the opposite direction which adds a bit uh, another dynamic and the main dominant mountain which sits over to the right um, I think it's just really nicely balanced with having those two foreground pine trees there now the lights as I'm talking now the lights kind of gone it's very 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 soft and it's not hitting the mountains anymore but I have taken a shot already image has to be priority so I've, I've done that already um, I just wanted to kind of talk you through that composition and, and why I think it works and I, t I took another one uh, a few moments ago when the sun was just poking through slightly and it just really brought out some of the kind of detail on these on these pine trees because they're still absolutely sopping and dark from all the rain yesterday so the sun was just the soft light was just shining off them so that looked really nice as well and brought out just a hint of those warmer tones that are sort of still lingering behind all that darkness so I'm boiling now <laughs> so I'm just going to <coughs> breathe a sigh of relief that I've got a nice shot there so it's just a fantastic way to kind of end the week and I feel content now that I can I can leave and I've got a couple of nice shots and yeah yeah it's just it's just a really nice way to end things so 
Hopefully that's lights going to pop out again because I want to show you another composition. So I've had a swift wander over to the next composition. Um, it looks stunning. I mean, unfortunately, we've lost the light now, which is a bit of a shame because that would have been nice to bring out the detail in some of the uh, Scots pines that we've got in the foreground again in this shot. But I'll show you the, the composition now. So basically, um, what we've got is, it's, sim it's similar in some ways to the last one in that we've got a bit of an intersection and We've got a gap, a big gap through the trees for the main mounting and this tree over to the right hand side, it's curved, just follows the flow and the shape of the, the main mountain peak there. And then the next peak, which sort of sits in the next gap to the left, again just sits quite nice and, and central through that gap there. I don't know, I just, I maybe it's just quite like this feeling of sort of when it, when it, well, this isn't strictly a woodland shot, it, it's just it's a mountain shot that has trees in, basically. But when I'm walking through woodland, um, I do like that feeling of just not being able to see very far in front of you and then you walk a little bit further and then all of a sudden the scene is revealed. So maybe there's some inspiration from that because that's the kind of thing that I like. Um, but also kind of with the spacing we've got a quite a nice little cluster of trees through this main gap here and it all just helps to kind of give a little bit of balance and structure to the image tree over to the right hand side i didn't think it really works when you try and get the top of that end because then you end up with quite a lot of sky space and it means coming further back so you start to lose the mountain whereas we want to kind of you know keep it reasonable f focal length so the mountain doesn't kind of get lost not much chance of that it's bloody huge but you know what i mean so all i'm doing is focus on the trees f11 um, i'm going to bracket the exposures because these tree trunks are so dark if i just take a single shot then i'm at risk of those underexposing um, or the sky and uh, the snow on the mountains overexposing and if i use a filter what i don't like about filters is that because we've got all this really dark tree bark um, if i put a filter on for the sky and the snow then they're just going to come out way too dark so for me personally and because there's zero wind so there's no movement in the trees i'll take three exposures blend them together in lightroom get lots of control i can bring out shadows where i want to but the idea would be to keep these trees fairly dark anyway because that's how they appear in person so that's that shot
Now several thousand years ago, Scotland was glacial. But as the climate became warmer and wetter, and the ice receded, it gave birth to the Caledonian pine forest. Caledonian, coming from the word Caledonia, which is what the Romans called Scotland, meaning wooded heights. And the forests of today only cover 1% of the original size. And I believe Glen Africa is only one of 35 remaining remnants of the original forest. Which means that all the trees here are direct descendants of the Scots pines from thousands of years ago. So places like this need to be enjoyed and cherished and protected and I for one will definitely be back What's that on your chin? Are you tired? I've had enough. Do you want to go home? Eh? Do you want to go home? Oh, you do, don't you? Come on then. <laughs>